Hello and welcome to Warblog. This is um, the Nigerian Police Offensive, which is the first action, sort of almost the preliminary action for the Biafra War in 1967. Um, essentially, so you've got Biafra, which is sort of currently part of Nigeria, it only lasted as a state for a couple of years or so. Um, and there were a lot of politics, I've not quite got my hand around a lot of it, but um, essentially they were an independent state and uh, they were exerting that, um, that essence, so to speak, uh, which included control of the oil uh, production in Biafra and essentially I haven't got quite around it, but Nigeria decides to uh, basically reintegrate Biafra into Nigeria with what they describe as a police action, um, which is, I guess, similar to the police action that we see in Operation Apollo, um, that Indian one, whatever that was. Uh, what was that? I can never remember these things. Um... looking through the list hmm Hyderabad Hyderabad that was a police operation let me just have a quick look at that Operation Polo. There's a lot of counters there. So the, in that, I mean, it's not about it, but the Dominion of India carries out a police operation to annex the state of Hyderabad, um, and that was 48. So I can't say that they, 19 years later, they they still sort of refer to that, but it wasn't in the historic past. Um, so probably the concept of a police operation and Hyderabad was a successful one. Probably after the succession of um, or the, the sort of the independence of colonial states, probably seemed quite appealing. Um, what with Nigeria, pretty much having close ties as a colony uh, as a British colony, or something like that. I'm not sure, exactly sure of it, but basically. Britain basically created Nigeria, I believe, and um, so concept of a police action, which I think is key, um, is probably what inspired them, and possibly they didn't consider that it would involve a complete two-year war. Um, the Hyderabad one was over in a few days, so I'm not saying that that was the only police action, but that's the links and uh, if you have been following war blog for a while you'll um, be picking up the pieces putting them together and um, learning so essentially it's, an, it's a top heavy map I've sort of written that down here but not to worry um, essentially the action takes place just in here so let's go into play mode um, so and I mean it's not a bad thing but we've got obviously a big map but essentially I mean, even that is being generous. I mean, we could probably squidge it all down to a map like that. So essentially, they take out these two places. Um, so these units essentially come down here. And these units come down here. I mean, how they do that, I don't know. But So essentially, those are the only two things you do. So it's not a, a massive strategic game. I mean... You know, you could probably get a prize for thinking of a way of doing this that doesn't include, doesn't encompass the bleeding obvious. Um, you, you know, there there aren't really any options on how to do this, so it's not sort of like a, an intense. Oh gosh, how can I do this? But it's an introduction to the Biafran War, Nigerian Civil War, um, and out of interest, uh, after this, essentially. Um, I mean, you have to read the Wikipedia to really get all the full background, but Biafra was quite happy with the invasion because it basically put them in the on the, on the moral high ground for international support and you know in their 
aim of achieving international recognition because they hadn't really been recognized by anyone, only about three or four African states. Um, but unfortunately, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, uh, but basically the Nigerian um, side or the Nigerian nation country was, was heavily supported by British, but also the, um, uh, the, the, the Soviets, I believe, and, and a lot of other people. Um, I mean, France, I think, was giving by for some weapons, but they weren't admitting to it, and they were sort of basically coming in through other other countries. Um, but basically, the, the, the Biafra was very poorly equipped, and Nigeria was heavily supported by, you know, major nations, um, and so, you know, they didn't last that long. But essentially, after this police operation, which they said they were quite happy with, because it gave them the more high ground, and then they, they basically went this way, and actually, and we'll do that later, but actually invaded Nigeria quite significantly. Um, so we'll get on to that later. So this is basically really nothing other than taking these two hexes. So all of this is just background. This is all just sort of, you know, to give you an idea. I mean, I don't know where these units were, um, but the, I mean, the, the only thing that is not so much outstanding, but this is the capital. So that's significant. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, and as we've got with the ports, I intend to actually do a little capital thing so we can have capitals but there's a port down there um, so anyway that should give you an, an introduction a bit of background so what I'll do I'll just reload that and as I said I can't really imagine anything else being done now, I don't know how it's going to be done um, I put I did start off with two units in these but then I put three because I thought otherwise it'd be too much of a walkover but they are in a town they're both towns so they're going to be I think doubled I can't remember what the, the factors are so there were three doubled up to about six and so what we've got here is we're not going to get massive odds against them but let's see what we can do well let's put the mechanized there Okay, so got some movement. Okay, I'll we'll put them in there. And we use the artillery. So that was good. So 1 1.6, 1 1.8, that was quite hefty considering they're only worth two. Okay, so let's prep that up. So I guess we can do the assault because there's not much more to it. So we're going to go 4, 8, 14, plus 10%, 15 versus, so it's going to be about 2 to 1. Three to one DR. Yeah, well, what I didn't factor in there in my mind's eye were the um, I didn't factor a few things in there. Were the the the, the up on the armor? So armor versus uh, infantry would have got a bonus. So would have mechanized against infantry. So there would have been two bonuses on that. Plus they would have got a, a, a also def a increased bent defensive bonus because they were in jungle. Uh, and the and and the town, but they, they they were forced out of there in the first go. The only thing to say in comparison, not so much. The only thing to say in addition to that is historically, obviously, the um, the police operation started on the sixth of July, and this place, which is uh, Nasuka, uh, fell on the fourteenth. So what we've just modelled there was the was eight days over a week of military action now that's the, the essence of hex encounter games um, and as said you know if we'd wanted to really look at that in detail that particular arm of the assault we could maybe have um, produced a map that was just this big and had you know obviously this density of hexes to make it more involved and more re representative and um, but this is just an overview so that's what we've done. We've just replicated essentially the eight days. 
Um, however, that could that, uh, the odds there. I mean, that they are three to one. That could have been an exchange. That you know, that could have gone another way. I mean, I played games like this before and we failed. So essentially, that you know, they did it really quickly. We've got exactly the same setup over here, pretty much. So let's just. The only difference is going through the jungle. We probably lose quite a bit. And so we're not going to get that one point. I'm not going to get that one point, that ten percent bonus. So let's just start off with the artillery. Oh, well we've got that like the last one there, and you see, this was only a two to one. Because they did slightly, so now uh, historically, uh, this place, which is actually um, Ogoja, should be according to Wikipedia, should be Garken. But if you look at Garken on Google Maps, basically it, it looks like it's a corner shop or something. Uh, it's not. There's nothing. There's no place. If you look at where Garken is and try to figure it out, um, so I just put it as Ogoja. It makes more sense. And and just another sort of. A bit of insight. Well, but basically that that fell on the twelfth. So that, in theory, fell after six days of battle, uh, or six days of police action. Um, and uh, here it's it's held out. Um, the the, th the thing to say here is that the, the, the Nigerians obviously carried out their police action from the north. Um, you know, they could have come from the west, so we don't know why they chose the north instead of the west. Um, possibly because the uh, Biafrans were had much more favourable terrain or more troop deployments in in this area, or you know, I don't know. I, I just don't know why they chose this. Whether whether it was a surprise direction to come from, or whether it was the easy direction to come from, or you know what the setup was so again you know if you're a student of military history this is just an introduction not a, not a, an expert overview um but essentially so we we pretty much created the you know a picture of the the first sort of period of action and we could say that this was like four or five days worth so this fell a lot sooner than it did historically but this is holding out a little more because this one fell first um the only thing to say oh okay on top of that well, we've got now we've got our movement, so they can't do anything. They're all moved up. Uh, the artillery is all moved up, but we can get in basically everything. Oh, can't get the armor in. Yep, so we've pretty much taken that out again. So there's not a lot that can be done. So let's go on to the next turn. There's not a lot that can be done here. Now, I'm tempted to sort of, to try and take this artillery out, and I think, to some extent, I will, because the Nigerian players should have played a little more defensively to protect it, thus not taking the advantage of putting all this stuff in there, we'll never take that, uh, with all this, these units in, in a town, but we can obviously do something there, and... I'm just going to start off with an attrition against this. So let's see how that works. Probably nothing. Nothing, yep. And I'm not going to move anything else because I've only got a few minutes left, but I'm going to move these units. I'm going to leave two units to defend. This is probably only going to be a two to one or something, so let's see what happens. Two to one and a DR. Okay. So that's nice. The artillery has taken a bit of a pounding. And now we can carry out an attrition roll because there's no way we're going to do an assault. One, two, three, four, five against 
um, seven, ten. So it's one to two in towns, and you know, it's just silly. So we'll do an attrition, probably unsuccessful, but 